All right, Bismillah Rahman Rahim. Uh, we have a very interesting machine problem at our hand. Okay, if you look at it, uh, it says the handle of the sector press is fixed. The, the handle of the sector press is fixed to gear G. Okay, there is a handle. Okay, this handle is basically fixed to gear G which in turn is in mesh with the sector gear C. Okay, This small gear which is also termed as a pinion is meshing with this large sector gear. Okay, The teeth of this gear are meshing with the teeth of this larger gear. Okay, Note that AB is pinned at its ends to gear C. Okay, So now you have got a link AB which is being pinned at its end to the gear C. What does it mean? It, it means this end B is being pinned to the gear. This gear is called a gear C. Okay, And the other end is pinned at point A on the underside of the table. Okay, This is a table. And this table can move up and down through these smooth guides Okay, uh, by virtue of the rotation of these two gears on which when the force of 40 Newton is applied. Okay. okay. ENF. If the gears, we assume a very important assumption here. This says that uh, the gears, the gears only exerts tangential force between them. They are exerting a tangential force between them. Okay. So determine the compressive force developed on the cylinder S. Okay, So this is the cylinder S. This is the cylinder S. What is the compressive force which is being developed on the cylinder S when this vertical Newton force is applied to the, this handle of the press. Okay, So this is uh, the question. Okay, So if you look at it, uh, we are going to break this component and uh, this uh, machine problem into three sub components. One will be this uh, small gear which we call it as the A component and we'll draw its FBD here. The other one we call this sector gear, the bigger gear as B and we'll draw its FBD. And the third component uh, or the sub component of this uh, machine assembly will be this table. Okay, This table EF. Okay, And we will say this table EF as and solve it in under the heading of FBDC. Okay, now this, the mechanics has been explained how we symbolizes it. Now we will break this uh, machine assembly. The first uh, component will be the FBD, the free body diagram of this small gear. Okay, if you look at this gear, small gear, you will see that this small gear, a 40 newton force is applied over here. Okay, and from point G, the distance is 0.5 meter. Okay. And remember, we are, since it is being uh, fixed at this point G, this is pinned. This is going to be pinned and pin will always have two components, GX and GY. And another very important uh, aspect of this, this small gear is meshing with the larger gear. And they say when they mesh, they, they say over here that we assume that the gears only exert tangential force between them. So we will assume that this is a tangential force, this red uh, arrow and line is showing the tangential force under the heading of FT. Okay, So this is the tangential force and this is an assumption. We assume this is the sense. You can assume the sense other way around. So we have assumed this as the sense of this force in this way. So if you look at it, uh, we can uh, basically for the equilibrium of this small uh, pinion and small gear G, we can say the summation of moments at G equal to 0 and we are assuming that the clockwise moment is a positive moment. Okay. So now very simple it is if you look at it first of all this tangential force okay this tangential force which is acting in this way here okay and this gear basically which has a radius of this gear which has a uh, radius of 0 0.2 meter okay this gear has a radius of 0 0.2 meter. So this force times the momentum perpendicular distance from point G, the center point is 0 0.2 meter. So force into perpendicular distance is one moment. But look, uh, this force, this tangential force will rotate this gear in the direction of anti-clockwise direction. It will rotate in the, if you look at it, in the anti-clockwise direction. So we put a minus sign here plus this 40 Newton force. 
times the moment arm 0.5 meter will be a plus sign we put a plus sign why because this force if you look at it as from the gear g aspect point of view it will be rotating this gear in a clockwise sense in a clockwise sense you can see from g is fixed and this handle you apply this force it will only rotate this gear in the sense of clockwise so we will put it a plus sign over here so we assume the clockwise moment as positive you can take it anti clockwise positive it is an assumption so this whole equation you know all the values there is only one unknown which is ft okay so when we solve this problem we calculate the tangential force equals to 100 newton okay and see this tangential force is coming as positive which means we assumed the correct direction okay again it was a uh, guesswork we could be wrong if we assumed the other way around now we go to this uh, sector the the bigger gear which is b the fbd b if you look at it this fbd it is being pinned at h this free body diagram is being pinned at this unique point which is the h point okay this is a very unique point then if you look at it there is this link okay and the other point if you look at it there is a tangential force which was acting at this point and remember this tangential force is not seen on the figure so this is an internal force and remember for internal force when we disassemble these two gears this was the sense we assumed when we go to this larger gear we assume the opposite sense if you sum up both these forces the net result is zero because it is an internal force remember the Newton's third law action and reaction okay and the other thing is that this link if you look at this link we assume that this link uh, even though it is pinned here and pinned here okay we assume that this link uh, is basically going to be a two force member okay we can see that it will function as a two force member okay as it is being uh, able to take uh, this uh, table up and down as it is being pinned below the table so it appears that it will be as for our ease of calculation we will be taking it as a two force member so here we assume that uh, the force applied in this uh, the direction of this uh, link a b okay so we can assume it as a two force members means forces are going to be applied in two different directions okay so if you look at it it is a two force member and we assume that the direction of this link if you look at it which is being applied uh, in this direction so if just just for ease of calculation there uh, uh, you already know that a two force member here if you look at it if you have a two force member sorry if you have remember if you have a two force member force could be applied in this direction okay in a two force member okay or you can also apply the force remember tensile force can be applied or you could also apply a compressive force it is up to your choice how do you apply the force uh, over here okay so that is very very important that either you could apply a tensile force or you you basically apply a compressive force in your respective member okay so if you if you look at it here in this we we assume that uh, on the underside we assume this is our force ab okay okay from one side okay so if, if we say this is from one side and this is one side which means that this is a compressive force okay because it on the one side we will assume this is the applying force okay, over here the other side when we go it must be the opposite to this one as it is a link and link it will have only it's a two force member it will have only two forces so this is the force ab that we have applied over here so again that ab is a two force member and from right angle triangle if you look at it this ab if you can see it very easily uh, this will be if you look at it uh, this is a right this will be a right angle triangle this will be the hypotenuse this will be the base 0 0.35 meters and this will be the height which is 1.2 meter okay so if you look at it 
this triangle you can very easily solve this force AB uh, puzzle okay you can say that uh, this is 0 0.5 meter this is 1.4 meter and this is your link AB okay this is your link AB so if you you know the base and you know the perpendicular you can very easily get the theta by applying tan theta so tan theta will be basically equal to if you look at it it will be equal to uh, 1.2 upon 0.35 okay this is opposite upon adjacent so you get your theta okay so this theta comes out to be 73.73 degrees okay this theta is 73.73 degrees so where it is this is the orientation of this two force member and this is 73.73 now you are basically interested in what is going to be the magnitude of this force AB. Okay, as you know, already know the orientation. So you know this force AB will have two components. One will be the base and other will be the perpendicular. Okay. And again, very quickly you can say that uh, the base component, the base component will basically be zero because it will have no moment arm. But the perpendicular component, okay, this perpendicular component, which will be uh, where you can say this component, this perpendicular component, this one, sorry, this perpendicular component will be the active component. And what will be the value of this perpendicular component? It will be basically, you know, it will one will be FAB cos theta, the other will be FAB sin theta, and you know the value of your theta. So when we apply, what we can do here is basically you can apply summation of moments about h equal to zero because you know you always apply moments where maximum knowns gets nullified. This is the h point. So if you apply, you have uh, basically got your vertical component, which is this one, FAB, okay, sine 73.3, and the moment arm will be from this point to H is 0 0.35, okay. And if you look at it, since the gear is fixed at H, this force AB sine 73 vertical component has a tendency to rotate this gear in anti-clockwise direction. So therefore, we put a negative sign. Then, what about the, of the tangential force that we've assumed the other way around from the gear this one this is the sense okay this tangential force is there which is 100 newton we have calculated it here its moment arm because this gear is circular circular gear so it is the radius so the radius here and here is same so it will be 0 0.35 100 newton into 0 0.35 plus 0.65 0 0.35 plus 0.65 so but again if you look at it this ft if it is fixed gear is fixed here this ft can take the uh, this sector gear in a direction opposite to the clockwise it means in anti-clockwise direction so again we put a negative sign here okay one sign negative because they both have that tendency to take this big sector gear in anti-clockwise direction so if you look at it you uh, you know all the values fab you will not know you know ft which is 100 newton this is 0 0.35 plus 0 0.65 so in this whole equation everything is known except FAB and so you calculate your FAB equals to minus 297.6 Newton. So again this FAB comes out to be minus 297.6 Newton. So this tells that our assumed direction was a wrong direction. Okay, We have assumed it as a, uh, as a, as a, as a compressive, Okay, it was a wrong direction. So it does, it does not matter as it was our assumption. Okay. So it can you can we can make a right assumption, we can make a wrong assumption, it does not matter. Okay. Now we go to the free body diagram of this table. Okay, this table, see it is passing through these two small guides. It is EF is this, and on which the compressor S, this uh, cylinder S is lying. Okay. Again, we assume that this cylinder, since it is we said is the compressive force, you have to calculate the compressive force developed on the cylinder S. So we assume that this is again we assume this is the compressive force of this cylinder fs okay we assume you can assume the other way around also so we apply if you look and then again this was our two force member for whose direction we assumed 
was in this was the sense of FAB and again when we go to the other point we assume the opposite sense of FAB which is this again this is the opposite sense to that of FAB so we have assumed it and remember our FAB was a negative value so we assume the opposite of the link AB here okay and this is FS so we can say as we are interested in the vertical force of the cylinder compressive we do not need and these any are basically what they are basically the reactions provided by these links so that this table cannot move in the other side from or cannot move out of these support guides so this is reaction e any and nf normal reactions so if you look at it the problem is now very simply solved you simply apply sigma fy equal to 0 because you want this compressive force fs so when we apply we will get uh, this fs now link you apply sigma y this is the positive sense of y axis so fs is downwards so you put a mi minus fs then what about this fab this fab will have two components this fab will have how many components you know it will have two respective components one component will be this one and the other component will be this one okay other component will be this one okay the component which is parallel to axis is, is basically a waste to us we are not interested in that because we are planning sigma calculating sigma fy okay so we, you know basically and this angle is 73.73 why because remember this was our 73.73 so this is an alternate angle so 73.73 so now you apply what will be basically FAB this vertical component will be the horizontal will be FAB cos 73.73 the vertical component will be FAB sin 73.73 but see the sense of FAB sin 73 it's opposite to the positive y axis so you again put a negative sign so now this equal to 0 so you know you, you basically know the value of FAB and remember see our FAB was how much when we calculated it just before our FAB was minus 297.6 Newton so again from minus this is the from the Sigma FI and this is FAB but FAB is minus 290 you calculated it sine 73.3 so here you calculate your FS is equal to 285.68 Newton so what does it means by luckily we have assumed that this sense the, the sense of the cylinder compressing it the table downwards is uh, our assumption is correct as our value is positive then since again it's a machine machine will always give you an output some positive output so we can always calculate the mechanical advantage of this machine so if you want to compute even though it is not given the mechanical advantage of this machine will be output upon input so what was your respective output of the compression 285.68 newton so uh, you can approximate it to 86 and what was the input the input was by at this lever remember 40 newton this was the input so we divide 286 by 40 and we get uh, our input as 7.0 so this is the mechanical advantage of this sector gear machine in which there is a large gear and this is a small pin uh, uh, gear which is also called as the pinion okay so i hope uh, it was a quite tricky problem and interesting you would, you would have enjoyed the calculation of this problem and uh, i thank you all for seeing this numerical of mine thanks a lot and please subscribe to my channel and also press the bell icon so that you can get update of all the new uh, knowledgeable videos of statics that i am going to bring to you thanks a lot love this